Good friends are like the stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're always there. In this piece, a boy finds a new best friend in the hospital. After months of becoming closer to each other, something comes in the way. What is this barrier and how will the two friends overcome it? This is My Forever Friend by Caesarus Weathersby. I've had a rare anemia my whole life, which requires me to go to the hospital every four weeks for a blood transfusion. Every four weeks, I spend two days in the hospital with nothing to do. I know some of the kids who go to the hospital often, and sometimes we visit each other's rooms. Only problem is, most of these kids are much younger than I am, so I can't really relate to them. I accept this fact and try to make the best of it every time I go. During a routine visit, sometime after my 15th birthday, my favorite nurse asked me if I had met Greg, a new patient about my age. I told her I hadn't, but would like to, so she led me to his room. My life would never be the same. His room was full of silver balloons, games, and sports drinks. Greg was a boy with tan brown skin and curly black hair. He had a controller in his hand and was playing Nintendo. After we were introduced, he asked me if I wanted to play. I love video games, so I gladly accepted his offer. I then noticed a neon yellow band hanging from his IV pole. I asked him what it was, and he told me it was chemotherapy for his leukemia. I had never really talked to someone with cancer before, so I was intrigued to hear the details of the disease. We exchanged information about each other while playing Nintendo, and by the time we were done, I felt as if I had known him for years. We were friends from that day forward. Whenever I was admitted to the hospital, I would always ask if he was there. If he had just left the hospital, the nurses would always tell me Greg had asked about me. Finally, Greg's foster mom suggested to my dad that we take our friendship outside the hospital walls. So, Greg started visiting me at my house, and our bond grew even stronger. Months went by, and Greg was still not getting any better from his leukemia. His appearance changed from time to time because of his chemotherapy. His thick, curly black hair would fall out. Sometimes, he would lose large amounts of weight. It was very hard for me to see him as sick as he was, but the physical changes would never affect his character. He always kept his upbeat attitude he never showed any signs of fear or sadness. Earlier this year, Greg's condition took a turn for the worse. His doctor told him that he had to come to the hospital every day for antibiotics and potassium. One time, when I was keeping him company, I asked him about his prognosis. He told me, They've tried everything there is to try, and I might die. I couldn't believe how honest he was with me. He was really thin, just under 100 pounds, but I felt confident that he would be all right. After some strong antibiotics and other medicines he was taking, he eventually did get better. He packed up a few pounds, grew some hair back, and soon we were back to hanging out and playing video games together. We went to see movies and laughed together every minute. We were at the apex of happiness and things couldn't have been better. Then BAM! Greg was hit with a nasty infection. The chemo had affected his immune system, making him vulnerable to bacteria that was looking for a place to set up shop. Greg was once again hospitalized and bedridden. I prayed for him every time I visited. First, he lost his ability to play video games. Then, his ability to speak. And finally, he started to slip in and out of a coma-like sleep throughout the course of a day. I still remember entering his room. A great sadness hit me as I saw him lying in that small bed covered in pink blankets. His eyes were closed, and every breath he took seemed as though maybe his last. He had about six tubes connected to him, and four machines all around him. I wanted to press the button on the machine that administered a morphine because he appeared to be in tremendous pain. I felt scared because he 
didn't look as if he had recovered. I took his hand, which was cold as ice, and said a prayer. I prayed for divine action and for Greg's soul to do whatever it needed to do, even if the men went back to the other side. My dad then came to take me home, so we said our final goodbyes and headed back to the house. That night, I could not sleep, so I went downstairs. I had prayed every night that Greg would get better and not die. But my wishes and my prayers did not help because Greg died on that Thursday in January. It was six in the morning when my mom came and told me, Adam, he's gone. I cried more than I ever had in my entire life. I could not believe that my best friend was gone. Two years have passed, and I still remember Greg, his warmth, his big heart, and his love for his family and friends. Knowing Greg has changed my life. Greg's struggle with leukemia made me realize that no matter how bad I feel sometimes, there are people who have it worse. I will never, ever forget Greg, because he was so special to me. I feel that he watches over me and that he is my guardian angel. Even though I have to go through life with a blood disease, Greg's death taught me to be thankful for what I have rather than sad for what I do not. Thank you.